Hello, YouTubes. My son was recently gifted a clear atomic purple shell for his Nintendo Switch Lite. And that gives us a perfect opportunity to do a complete teardown and reassembly video. Let's jump right in. Okay, we're going to start with just unboxing this. Let's see what we got. Two screwdrivers, some purple buttons, hardware, colorful A, B, X, and Y, screen protector accessories. They provide a screen protector with black and that will cover up the turquoise. It works. We have at the top and bottom Phillips head screws and tri-wing screws on the back. I'll remove the tri-wing first. After we have all eight screws out, we're going to work the bottom open using our thumbnails and then we're just going to work our way around. We can use a plastic pick or something if we need to. And we just need to clear that headphone jack at the top of the switch. That's that. Now I have with me some transparent tape. Okay, now that we're in, let's go ahead and remove this metal shield. We have a small screw here, Phillips head, a small Phillips head here, a small Phillips right here, another one right here. This one right here is longer than the other three. You're going to want to make note of that if you're doing this yourself. I'm going to go ahead and take a piece of tape. And I'm going to put it next to that hole. So that we don't forget. And I think that's all that's holding this thing on. So again, we will take the screws on, just so we don't lose them, or forget what goes where. Okay, before I go any further, I'm going to want to disconnect the battery. So I'm going to have to get this ribbon cable out of the way, and then the battery underneath it. Okay, we'll disconnect this cable. And while holding that out of the way, we'll come in from the top and disconnect this battery cable. Now that we've removed power from the board, we can safely remove other items. Let's start with the right trigger. Before we can remove this trigger, we have to remove these buttons right here. So we'll disconnect this cable by unclipping that and then gently pulling it out. And then we can just grab this about here and out it comes. Now we can remove the actual trigger. It's just going to be two screws, Phillips head. And that should come right out. We'll go ahead and tape those screws up so that we don't lose them. 
And for the left side, we just have two screws again. One here and one right here. And with those two screws loosened up, we can remove this trigger. Now I got lucky on the right side and I got all this out in one shot. You see, there's actually a spring right here. Be careful about that. You don't want to lose it. Now that we have our triggers out, let's go ahead and remove our cooling system here. So that would be the fan and the heat sink is attached using three screws. Again, they're just going to be Phillips head here, here, and here. Now the heat sink is also stuck to this fan with some adhesive right here. We're just going to cut right through that very gently with this exacto. It might be a little bit stuck because of the thermal compound. And we'll set that off to the side. Okay, next up is the fan. Before we remove the fan, it is extremely important that we disconnect this ribbon cable. To disconnect this ribbon cable, we first unclip it here, and then we just slide it out. Next, we can remove our three screws here. With the heat sink out of the way, it looks like we have access to our game cartridge reader and the headphone jack. So we will remove all seven of these screws. That's going to be one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. Let's go ahead and remove those. And with our seven screws removed, we can disconnect this ribbon cable. It should slide right out now. Okay, now to remove this logic board, we need to disconnect three ribbon cables here here and here. So let's go ahead and do that. We also have to disconnect our wireless communication antennas here and here. Now these are very small connectors, so do be careful not to damage them. And now we just have to remove six screws. We have three smaller silver looking screws. That is one, two, and three. And then we have three other slightly longer goldish. And there's one here, one here, and one right here.
And so I believe now we should be able to remove this logic board. So it was a little bit hung up on the speaker here, just kind of stuck, but it came right off. And now we can go ahead and remove all of our buttons here. And then we can remove this joystick right here. It's just going to be these two screws here and here. Now, after removing our two screws, the joystick is quite loose. And you'll notice right there, there is a split and this little pad. And you're going to want to work the joystick actually through that slit you want to make sure to utilize that so that you don't damage this pad and rip it in half on accident now for the right side here it looks like the speaker has just one screw and then we disconnect it right here and it should come out but I see that it goes underneath this cable just a little bit. So we're also going to want to disconnect that cable. And theoretically now, this should come right out. And it does. Now, if you were wanting to actually replace your speakers, you can do that. You just have to take these three screws out. And inside of there is a speaker that you can replace. And that's the same on both sides. And as always, And now that we have the speaker out of the way, we can see that we have four screws. And we also have two ribbon cables, one here and one here. Let's go ahead and disconnect our ribbon cables first. These are all Phillips heads still. So far, I've only seen the tri-wing screws on the outside. And let's see if we can just lift that right out. Yes, we can. And now we can just get this stuff right out of here. Maybe. And that leaves us with a joystick right here that is held in with two screws, just like the other one. One screw here and one screw here. Let's go ahead and get those out. Well, that sounded just terrible. Okay, the screwdriver that they supplied me with actually just broke. Yes, folks, that crunching sound that we heard was indeed the screwdriver broke. Fortunately, the screw that I was trying to remove is still very well intact. It took 
some minor damage, but it's okay. I'll get a different tool and be right back. Okay, and we're back with a different screwdriver now. And we will get these two screws out for our left hand joystick. And just like the other side, we have a little slit in that pad there. And we should be able to work the joystick right through there without damaging anything. And to remove this entire plate with the battery is just these four screws, one here, one here, one here, and one here. And then we can lift off the whole assembly just kind of straight up and mind this ribbon cable right here. Removal of the screen requires the use of a heat gun to heat up and release the glue around the edges of the screen. It's recommended only to heat up the front side, but I've also heard of people doing both the front and the back. And there we go. Now these appear to have some type of glue holding them on. Let's see if we can just... Yep. Now it's difficult to see, but there are alignment holes on the purple case. Just the same as on the original case. And same thing for the other pad. We'll just go ahead and remove it. And we'll transfer it on to our new shell. Again, it is very hard to see, but there are little alignment pins right in there. And that's it for this piece. The, the next thing I would want to do is clean around the mating surface here where the screen is going to be adhered onto this. And I want to inspect it and make sure that there's no bumps like in this area right here. There's some very minor damage and that would prevent the adhesive from wanting to stick down onto that perfectly. So I'm just going to go around it and clean it with some alcohol and smooth down that spot just a little bit. Now, to get the screen into our new shell, we're going to want to make sure that we identify this little notch. Now, that notch lines up with that ribbon cable there. Okay? And here's how we're going to do it. I'm going to insert this side first. Okay, so we're in over there. All these cables are cleared. We're good to go. 
now. We have our cable here, our Raven cable that we're dealing with. We're going to go ahead and grab it from this side. I'm going to very carefully pull it through here. Okay, so now we have it. And I'm going to keep lowering, getting the screen a little bit closer, a little bit closer. You don't want to pinch it. We don't want to tug on it. And we just want to achieve that. There we go. Something worth noting is that it's a really good idea to go around and just really give all this adhesive a good squeeze. And now that we have the screen into our new shell, we can reverse the disassembly process. The last thing we took off was this. We want to be careful with this ribbon cable. Remember, it needs to go through this hole. And over on this side, just make sure that nothing wild happened with that ribbon cable and you're not going to destroy it. And remember, the longer screw went into this hole right here. And then we had our shorter screws, one here, one right here. And the last one right here. Now let's go ahead and put our Joy-Con joystick back in on this side. And we have our two screws. And with that in place, let's go ahead and install some buttons. Here's the minus, here's our arrows, here's our circle button right here. And with those in place, we can install this little circuit board again. Now, when we put this circuit board in, we have to be mindful of this ribbon cable and this ribbon cable. And there we are. And now we can put our screws in. We had our longer silver looking screws over on this left side. We had our golden colored screws here. And this next ribbon cable here. And we clip it down. And now we can put our speaker back in. And we have just one screw right here. And after that, we just have our little plug and now that we have that we can go ahead and plug this cable back in right here and we clip that down and now we can move on to the right side starting with our joystick and we just have two screws here and here. And now we can drop in our A, B, X, and Y and our home button. Now remembering that the speaker and the main board are basically one piece as they go in. And we also have to steer clear this ribbon cable. This ribbon cable 
and this ribbon cable. There we go. That seems to be tricked with that cable. We have this cable here. We'll attach from the top side. And just pull that back some. There we go. And we have this last one over here on the left side that plugs in right here. Get in there with the tweezers. And there we go. Now let's see if we can get that speaker to drop in. That's kind of... There it goes. Now that our main board is in, let's go ahead and install some screws. And then we have our gold ones. And next up, we can plug in our antenna. And now we can get these ribbon cables plugged back in. And then we'll move on to this one here. And there we go. And we have one left. Let's go ahead and get that one plugged in. And we'll clamp it. And there we go. Okay, and now we're going to install our game card reader and headphone jack. And we just go ahead and get that ribbon cable connected straight away. Let's clamp that down. And we had our seven identical screws. So let's go ahead and get those installed. And now we can install our fan. The fan is held in by three screws, one here, one here, and one here. And now we can go ahead and plug in this ribbon cable here. And there we go. At this point, we can install our left shoulder bumper. And drop it right in here. It's important to see there's a ledge right here for this spring to sit in. And there we go. Once we have that, we can go ahead and take this assembly here and just rip it apart. We'll just get our thumb right in there and should be able to rip it right apart. So now we have the trigger removed and we can take our bag from earlier, find the purple plastic piece that matches this turquoise plastic piece. And let's go ahead and take this piece and we're going to take this piece and we're going to clip them together just like this. And we can drop this right back into there like so. And we can set this entire assembly just right on there like that. Now we have just two screws that held that on. Now let's go ahead and install our power buttons.
But do be mindful right here. Make sure that lines up nice and good. And I will take that right side shoulder button here and we will install this. There it is. Actually, this button right here, if I try to seat this shoulder, it actually just wants to push the button down in there. So I found that I'm basically going to have to get this exacto in here and work the button out of the way. And that way we actually got the shoulder to go up over the button instead of just pushing the button in. As you can see, it's a very tight fit. So be very careful of that right there. And once again, we will change out this turquoise part with this purple part. And we will just drop it right on here, just like so. Two screws, hold this in place. Let's go ahead and get those in. Next up, we can install the heat sink, but first, before we do that, we're going to want to clean it up. And let's add some fresh thermal compound. I often use a credit card to smooth this out. Right now, I'm just kind of being lazy. Anyway, let's go ahead and get this installed. And we just have three screws holding it in place. Our three screws are going to go here, here, and here. And there they are. The next step is to get the power plug back in and plug this last ribbon cable back in. Power cord is underneath that ribbon cable. We can plug the power cord back in by simply pressing straight down on it, just like that. And there it is, fully seated. Let's go ahead and get this last ribbon cable plugged in. And lastly, for this piece, we have just to install this metal shield right here. Once we have this lined up and in place, we just installed the four screws. We had a short one here, a short one here, a short one here, and then the one long one right here. Let's go ahead and get them in. And the one longer screw. And with that last piece in place, we are finished with this particular half of the Nintendo Switch. And now we're going to move on to this side. Now for this piece, all we have to do is transfer this little, I'll call it a bracket, and this piece here as well. We need to transfer those onto here and here. And... We need to install a couple other items, some buttons, the buttons up here, and that's about it. Let's go ahead and do that. That 
is a bit of a tight fit. It looks like it might be easier to put the buttons onto this piece of silicone and then go ahead and place this into the case here. Now, in my particular situation, I've run into a third problem on my unit here. As you can see, there is a very minor damage to that standoff right there. So I'm going to make that fit off screen. And all we have left is to install these little vents. And you can see an outline where it is meant to be placed. So just place it right inside that outline, I guess. And now we can go ahead and put these back together. It looks like I turned it on on accident. It also looks like it's working. And it also looks like this joystick could use some servicing. We will put our screws back in for the outer shell. We had the two Phillips head screws on the top and the two Phillips head screws on the bottom. And then we had the tri-wing screws on the back. So let's go ahead and get those in. And we have our two screws on the bottom. And then we just have our four tri-wing screws around the outer edge. And for the screen protector, they give us the screen protector itself, some wet and dry wipes, and a single dust absorber. And with that, our Nintendo Switch Lite shell swap is complete. We have transitioned from turquoise to atomic purple, clear atomic purple, and I think it looks really, really nice. The quality is there. It went together really nice. I ran into a few small snags buttons are beautiful and this was just a fun project overall it didn't take long to complete the longest part about it was recording everything so this Looks really, really nice. Cool. All right. Well, if you watched this all the way to the end, thank you very much. I hope you enjoyed it. Have a good day.